praise you, my King. Where you're sitting right now, we really so. You know, I want you to really take your heart, take all of who you are as a being, and and release it into Him. You know, people always say, become less so you can become more. No, no, no. Step into Him and expand yourself into all of who He is. You don't need to become less. He needs all of you. He needs the whole of you. He needs every part of you. But He needs you to expand who you are into Him. Into all of who He is, Father, we expand ourselves into You, my King. We breathe our breath into all of who You are, my King. take a breath of life as deep in as we can and to breathe that breath into creation and to let Yahweh our King remind us of the power that we carry the power of our voice, the power of our breath, the power of of who we are, the frequency we release, that which we carry, the image He's created us in, the power that He's given us, the authority, the dominion that belongs to me and you, the glory that's set upon a son that walks in His full glory, one who understands the measure of His kingdom and literally live in it. Father, tonight as we go through governance, let's be reminded of who we are. Father, let's also be reminded of what we are to become. Let's also be reminded of what we are taking back and what belongs to us. And let's, let's remind ourselves that there is more to our faith than coming to a meeting and praying a little bit in the morning and praying a little bit at night and reading a book. We have dimensions of truth that we can engage in. Yahweh is calling a company of people that is willing to engage all of who He is. And tonight we say yes. Tonight we want to go higher, wider. There's chaos in our city every year this time. But Father, we as sons, we stand before You. And we begin to understand who we are. We begin to shift the line and propel all your glory into place. Father, we love you. We praise you, my King. We, we thank you, Yahweh. You're majestic. Amen. Amen. Okay. How are you beautiful people doing? Thank you so much, uh, Connor. That was an answer. Okay, so a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, actually, I was at the gym and uh, this guy comes up to me and he asked me if I would like to work a little bit uh, extra, a couple of extra days over the um, Mardi Gras, you know, week. I was like, uh, hell yeah, <laughs> why not? Or what? And um, so he gives me a, a couple of uh, pl places that I'm going to go to, a couple of dates that I'll be working at. And uh, I love the idea of being in the city during this time. You know, and really I was so busy all day long and it was just chaotic and it's not, I don't I just have one job and I've got like three jobs um, in my normal life. You know, so I having to do spirit school, having to go to the hookah lounge, going to uh, a liquor store where I was working and it was very busy, crazy, literally to, to be honest with you, I have, uh, I went to work on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock um, and I have been working until 4 o'clock last night. Then I slept for an hour because I had to be back at the uh, liquor store for six o'clock, work there all day, come do this class, and I'm gonna have the hookah lounge until three o'clock tomorrow morning. Wow. Well, Yahweh's already been showing me and I haven't been able to sink. I haven't been able to soak in what was happening there because it was just a busy day, you know? And uh, it's been exciting. Let me tell you, Yahweh is calling a people that understand who we are. You know, and I'll be honest with you, I saw one person out there that was part of who we are, understand the revelation that we had, and it was so nice to see her there. You know, it was so nice to see another son. I don't know if you guys were there. I mean, obviously, I, didn't, I don't know about the parades, but it was nice to know that we're out there, you know, having fun, enjoying ourselves, yet uh, presenting our governance, breathing our breath, standing in the midst you know, sharing our breath with those around us, understanding that it's not about being on Zoom with us. It's not about praying against uh, Mardi Gras. This is not something you can stop. This is something we have to be part of to change to what we want it. That's what governance is. 
a king change the rules because he has the power to. You know, it's not in, in our situation. It's not a democracy. We don't have a board of people telling us how to do it. It's a theocracy. We only have God telling us how to do it. And he's not even telling us how to do it. He has synced himself with us, his body, his bride, to put us in a position where we understand the value of what he has placed in us. The value is placed on governance and how it has to come through the sons. It, it cannot happen through anyone else. You know, uh, I had a guy text me this um, from, from, from TikTok and he's asking me a question and it was a valid question. He says... Um, you know, we understand that Yahweh or Jesus said, no man knows the hour. So what do you think? You know, when do you think Yeshua will come? And I want to remind you that the reason Yeshua didn't know and doesn't know is because it's not up to God. Mm. Not up to Yahweh or the Father, not up to the Son, not up to the Holy Spirit. It's up to us. Yes. So he doesn't know because we haven't acted on who we are yet. Yeah. But, and I was a personal trainer for a long time, trust me, there's always a but. There's always a but involved. And it's either a big but, but, a small but, muscular but, or no but. And like they say nowadays, little booties matter. And so the but is an important thing because, because now we look at it and we realize, but God. But. Right? But God has done something. He's called a people that understand their value. And yeah, but he's slowly moving into our positions. Yes. You know, it's a lot of revelation. It's a lot of understanding. It's a lot of change regarding how I feel and think and understand and perceive. Mm. And a lot of change in our revelation and understanding of, of the Bible that we have studied for so many years. Mm -hmm. You know, because we thought we had the, the truth in its full measure. Right. Thought. And now we're beginning to realize, well, there's two other dimensions we haven't even touched yet. And I say we because we have touched it, but they can see I haven't really gone into it. And so because we have wanted the proof to be right there in study and meditation. And if it's not like that, then it can't be of God because, well, what? God's flesh and everything has to be true in our fleshly understanding. Mm. Well, no, God is spirit and his truth will be in spirit. That's right. Right. You know, so when I shift into that spirit dimension yes. and I begin to live in that realm, yes. I begin to receive the other dimensions of truth. Yes. And I said this to a, a person the other day, yes. remind yourself this is a lower form of communication. Hey, how you doing? Yes. Hello, we're going to meet you. Afrikaans. It's a, it's a lower form of communication. It was never meant for us to talk to each other like that. It's a fallen state. So when you start going into the kingdom of heaven, you really very quickly understand that because you're in that place, every knowledge and all that is in that realm belongs to you and it's infused in who you are as a spirit. That's why I have to get myself to the understanding that I am spirit and the cognitive understanding I need as a soul has to come from my spirit overshadowing who I am. To bring that truth into position, to bring that truth into place. That's good. Amazing. How are you guys doing? Yes. Let's go. I have to uh, just quickly to change my display setting because otherwise I'm going to lose my place every two minutes. My tablet goes off. Okay. Earth like heaven. Mm -hmm. Say it in your heart. Say it in your, say it in your mind. Now, you have to understand something. If someone tells me, I want you to build me a castle exactly the same as the one on uh, your way to slide out. Have you ever, got, have you ever seen it? Yeah. Tiny little two bedroom uh, yeah. castle. Woohoo! It's cute. I've driven past there many times, um, but you have to understand, I will not be able to build it. I will not be able to just look at it as I drive by or hear what people say or look at magazines and then put it, uh, create it in the same way. I have to literally go there, take measurements. I have to look at it. I have to kind of feel the feel for it, see how it was built, what type of material was used, what type of paint was used, what is inside this place before I can really build it. And I don't understand exactly what we've been thinking over the last 2,000 years, but we've not been in the heavens. But we are so willing and so desperate to bring the kingdom of heaven into us. But we haven't been to the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, we believe that I can't see that place until I die. So how can you possibly, for one second, bring the kingdom of heaven into earth if you've never been there and you can only go there when you die? 
Exactly. And I have to ask God this question. Uh, can you hear me? I'm here, 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 I'm Because it's like, we, we think like, like there's something downloaded in the wrong way. So we speak. Have you ever seen uh, Ace Ventura when he does the whole tackle? But he does it backwards and he goes, Blick, 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 that's kind of where we act with this. Yeah. We want to go around everything backwards in slow motion and it makes no sense. <laughs> but when the company of people kind of rise up to a higher place, we begin to see who Yahweh is reflecting in us and we understand the power. We understand how to go to heaven, live in heaven, perceive that realm, understand that realm, live in its full measure and bring it into creation. Yes, so I also have to remind myself that with this... It's my physical understanding of things, and so I don't have a spiritual understanding of touch and feel. Mm. Well, I can, because obviously my spirit can touch and feel. My soul can touch and feel. Everything my physical body can do, my soul and my spirit can do. Exactly. But because I've never been spirit, I've only been soul, and even if though I have been soul for so long, I don't quite understand that my soul and my spirit, that is spirit beings, can connect itself to its full measure and begin to understand with a cognitive revelation of how to feel the kingdom of heaven, how to go into the kingdom of heaven, how to understand that realm and to bring it into creation. It's a spiritual form and framing that I have to do in my revelation of the word. And of course, remind yourself when you walk in that kingdom, it is an infused knowledge that is poured into you. And I say poured into you, it's a, it's a, you, you have amnesia regarding the kingdom of heaven in your spirit. Because your spirit's been bound to your soul for how many ever years it was bound until you divided it. So for everyone in this room, probably many years. Because there was never a revelation in the church until we started coming to this meeting. Right. Thank you. Exactly. Now I love the idea of bringing the kingdom of heaven into the earth. But we have to understand, it's not going to happen because we want it. It's not going to happen because I have a desire. It's not going to happen because, well, I prayed and seek God's face regarding it, and it has to, because that seems, you know, I say in the name of Jesus, and it has to happen. You know, we have to understand something. It's stepping in to the name that creates a position for you where you have a place to speak. A place that your voice echoes into creation with and changes and aligns things. Because I remind you, as my spirit links with my soul, that links with my body, speaks, I speak as an oracle. Now, an oracle, I have to speak out of the heavens, which is... A frequency that's breathed out of my spirit. My soul is going... Because it has no idea what it's saying. It sounds like crazy talk. But I eventually get my spirit of my soul to the place where it is so tuned into that frequency that is an interpretation and revelation. Because the interpretation of the revelation is what we are teaching today. But then in the same breath, my body has to get to the place where it can materialize that which is in the spirit through the understanding my spirit being carries with the revelation my soul has regarding that revelation to take it and form it out of a spiritual matter and begin to create it into a physical matter. Yes, do stop. Well, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it and I understand it and Yahweh has shown it to us. And it's time for us to begin to believe it. He says, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Let me just say that again. Uh, as I stood outside the nightclubs with my sign saying, turn and burn, so I've also sent you. Mm. Oh, let me think about it. Not. Not. Uh, no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was so bad that the Pharisees and Sadducees looked at the rabbi with authority, which was the highest ranked uh, uh, rabbi in that city at that time, Yeshua Christos, and said, he's just like the sinners. Hangs out with them. He drinks with them. But you might say, well, man, he didn't drink with them. How do you know? Exactly. It was a custom. It was a custom to drink wine. No, it says drink wine. But what? Don't get drunk. Don't get drunk. <laughs> no, we can't do that. Why? Because we drink and then we want more. 
Because we have no self-control. Mm. Well, if you have self-control, you can drink. And in fact, if you have self-control, you can do a lot of things. Exactly. Because there's control. Right. And as we grow, as we mature, that part of who I am has to put, go into position. It has to go into place. Why? Because I'm sent into the world. And I go, to Jesus wants you this, you should know. And if you don't, sorry, bro. <laughs> no, that's a problem. And that's not what they want to hear. They want to actually have a conversation with you that excludes Christ. Yeah. Oh, why well, you all I want to have a conversation with someone that if I don't want to talk about Jesus. Well, can you actually talk about anything else but Jesus? <laughs> no, I say that because I couldn't. Now, for those who have been here for a long time, you remember about four or five years ago, I was talking... Uh, about Yeshua teaching me how to relate to the world. Mm. I started doing CrossFit and everybody wants to talk and chat and when I get there, they'll run away. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk to the pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to be able to be in the conversation. Yeah. We need to be able to be there. Oh, what do they tell dirty jokes? I've got some couple of damn dirty jokes, dude. <laughs> and they are funny. I mean, come on, I've got some dad jokes. Oh, yes. What, what God does mice worship? Jesus. <laughs> and I, that's the most corniest thing I've ever heard in my life. But, see, we have to be there. And I say this because at the hookah lounge, not once did I talk about Jesus. And the only time I actually ever talked about Jesus, there was a lady... They had just sat on the chair opposite, she was waiting for something, and eventually we just started communicating, we talked about school, first school, you know, 45-minute sermon later, oh, that's what I'm doing. But that was once. All the other times I'm just sitting there, I'm just sitting there, I'm listening to music, uh, to, to young plays, and I just uh, expand my spirit, I go into that realm, I allow the Father to, to shift me and propel me, and I open up who I am to be there. You know, there was a young man there that got me the job. Yeah. And one of the things he said, and I shared this with you last week, but I want to share it again, he says, Man, I wouldn't go into that place because I'm not gay. And so I also won't go to church because I'm not a Christian. And I'm like, well, that's going to change the sun. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later, he moves to another state. So he's no longer working there, no longer see him. But I have him, uh, him, uh, him on Instagram. All of a sudden, he's going to church. He's telling everybody how he loves God again and how things have changed in his life. Now, I might not have said a word to him. Someone else might have preached to him. But I know that my presence, the governance that I present in creation has aligned and shifted him. Because once the sun comes into the atmosphere of the earth with its full measure, it brings alignment into creation and salvation to the nation. Yes! What, what does uh, Kim Clement always say? You look much better. Somewhere in the future. Yes. Yeah, you look much better somewhere in the future than you look right now. Yes. And it's not because I have to wait until one day. It's the revelation that hits me and the power comes in. Right. It's not, oh, I have to be like this, 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 and this. I have to do this, this, this. I've missed that step, so oh, it's over. I can't get there anymore. I have to go back a couple of steps to reinstate that step. No, it's just growth. It's constantly being consistent. How you guys doing? Yes, sir. We are sons of the kingdom sent to colonize this world. The very same mission God gave to Adam and Eve. Now, I need to understand, it hasn't been done up to now. Right. Nobody did it no. except Yeshua. And he didn't even fully begin to do it. He was talking about it, telling people to do it. And the disciples, they had a glitch in their download. Why? They came at him with complete and utter only religious revelation. They didn't even think it was possible for them to begin to walk in that measure of power and authority. They were casting our demons and raising the dead. But how many of you understand, even up to this day, we don't think of governance. We don't think of going into the courts and reestablishing uh, things within creation, exactly. changing laws, bringing things back into a specific order according to the blueprints we see in the heavens because we live there. We don't get that yet, but there will be a day. Yeah. Once that day is in full motion, the creation will set itself because by that time we'll begin to understand the value of who we are and in the value that I carry, my breath creates. Yes, Lord. Yes. That is now my breath creates... 
as much as I believe. I mean, you understand that. And it's easy to believe certain things. For example, a certain time of the year it gets kind of cold, but not too cold, so what does we do? We get the flu. So when that season comes right up there, we're like, okay, I'm going to go get the, shoe fl the, the flu shot. Right, the flu shot, the, 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 sh the shoe flop. Or we say, oh, you know, it's that time of the year I'm going to get sick. Or it's a certain amount of pollen, and, 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 and we say, oh, it's hay fever day, or hay fever season, I'm going to get hay fever. Like, it's what you believe, it's easier, you know. Oh, I can't eat that food, if I eat that food, it does this to my stomach. I'm lactose intolerant. We, we confess things without thinking, and we create, because it's so easy to believe it. Doctor says, you've got cancer, you're going to die, that's it. Why? Because it's so easy to believe this stuff. Stuff I've seen thousands of people die of cancer. My dad died of cancer. And so it's easy to believe that. But then God said, well, you're going to take spiritual matter and create it into physical matter. <laughs> really? Whatever, dude. Because I can't fathom that. So I have to change my perception of my view. I have to change my understanding. It says, Yahweh bless them and Yahweh say to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And subdue it and rule over it. Mm. You have to understand something. Now we forget this. 95% of everybody you met. Hadn't spoken to God in many many years. Mm. Me and you. Yeah. Speak to him every day. In fact we live in his presence. We know him. We love him. We worship him. We glorify, gl glorify this incredible majestic God. And then we shake someone's hand that I haven't spoken to him in years. That frequency that's in me, I don't feel it anymore. I don't feel it anymore. But someone else does. Immediately. Just my breath. Just go, hi. Have gum in your mouth. Hi. How are you? Remind yourself of who you are. And I say remind yourself of who you are because it's a consistent thing. You know, it's a continuous thing I have to do all the time. But it's not something I just know. How are you guys doing? Adam and Eve were to rule over creation in the authority Yahweh gave them and so brought, uh, bring it under the rule of Yahweh. I'm mean, not going to say we didn't do that. As a matter of fact, they didn't even almost do it, and the satanic or the demonic just had the capacity to take what wasn't occupied. But you can go in the spirit realm today. I say the spirit realm, I mean the creator within the kingdom of earth, and see if you can find a mountain that's not occupied by a sun. Let me tell you something. Satan is losing grip. Now you might listen to some people, and if you've been out there, <coughs> there is no order in creation. People are believing the craziest things. They do whatever they want, say whatever they want. Yeah. Just craziness. Wear whatever they want. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm. If you've been to the parade, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've taken some photos because I can't believe it. <laughs> I mean, some of the photos on my phone looks like pornography. Because women just don't wear, some, some of the men. We had a guy come into the, into the liquor store with literally a G-string on. Yeah. And a keg. Yeah. Yeah. And his six pack was a keg. <laughs> a big keg. Like, a, like the mother of kegs. Yikes. And you know, it's almost like we just, it's okay, that's, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's what it is. And I speak to the people all the time and I'm like, so I mean, let, let's be honest now, if I have a beard, alright, and um, I wear makeup on my face, and I have long hair and I made it up all beautiful and I have a nice boot tube on and I have nice, nice high heels on and a really tight pair of pants, and I go out in public like that, No. <laughs> uh, well, if it's not a costume party, you have a fat glitch in your download, a disorder that needs attention. Please help us out. I mean, I don't particularly care what you think, but that's the reality of it. 
They said, what do I call you? I asked him they entered something, it's a he, she. And the only reason I say that is because my son is in his, his, his class where he's got to catch up on some of the things that he has lost or that he needs to um, graduate at the end of the year. And it's only because they've given too many subjects for this term. And so when I get a, I get a, a text from the teacher, the first, the first te text I got was personal and the second one was bulk. In the bulk message she says he, she. And I'm like, man, are you, are you referring to my son as a he, she? And she laughs and she's like, no, 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 I'm talking to boys and girls. But I, I don't understand how society is okay with this. Because we have just allowed everything to be okay. But I, everything is not okay. But my place, my place in this world is not to try and change that man. Or the issue. It's not my, it's not my, problem. my responsibility is to try not to stare and laugh and think, Coo -coo. <laughs> Coo -coo. my responsibility is to love him, to care for him because it's the love of God and he's not going to see it because I'm around him for two seconds and tell him I love him. It's not going to work. I have to show him love. Uh, how am I going to do that? Well, I don't know. But if he doesn't feel the love of God, he will not repent. That's right. yeah. But you might even think, because today's society doesn't think there's any form of repentance needed. Right. And I remember a couple of years ago, I was speaking to a friend of mine that's a Jew, and his understanding is that there is no such thing as sin. Right. But you have to remember that there was atonement for sin, right. you kill a, an animal. Right. There's no atonement for sin anymore. Right. So, they now just came to the theology that there is no sin. I can just do whatever I want to. Everything is okay. I can't miss the mark. Well, in an essence, they kind of it's kind of true. Because you can't miss the mark if you don't have a mark. If I have a gun and I'm shooting it at the gun range and I don't have any target, how many understand? I will not miss one shot. I will get it right every single time until I put a bull's eye at 25 feet, the size of a Coke bottle, with a Coke lid, Go bottle it, and I aim at it and shoot it. The first one might miss. What did I do? I missed the mark. Second one is right in the center. I have hit it, bullseye. So the first one I sinned because I missed the mark. The second one I didn't. But it's the same thing. I did the same thing. I want you to understand this. When a son takes governance in creation, it slowly begins to create an atmosphere where people want to accept Christ. And let me tell you, this is what it does. It removes the vomit off of Yeshua. Because it is impossible, listen, listen to me, if you know the gospel in its pure form, it is impossible in any way, fashion or form to reject Christ. Nobody in their right mind, unless they have received this gospel wrapped up in religion so many times that they cannot accept it. And you can literally go into any of these pubs, bars, areas within New Orleans and speak about Jesus and see how long that lasts for you. We have a really, really bad name. And I don't understand exactly how we do this because we believe we're the only religion. I'm not going to exaggerate on that or go more. I want you to think about that because we, there is only one religion. Now, does that mean, does that mean there's, there's many other ways to get to where we need to be? No. It means that there's only one God out of all the other beings that has atoned for our sins. Mohammed never atones for no one's sin. Now, I'm not even going to go to Buddha because Buddha was never, ever, it never intentioned to be a religion. He was a philosopher. He was also never fat. Matter of fact, he would live off of a grain of rice three times a day with some saliva. To empty himself and to meditate on the philosophy and revelation that he carried. When he died, they made it a religion. Taoism, pantheism. 
This is crazy things out there that we believe. Well, God is everything, everything is God. Well, it's not a lie. But it's not 100% truth. That's right. So I have to find the middle ground. Right? Yeah. Yahweh is still, still calls us to bring that order back into creation. The love of Yahweh into the world. To make earth like heaven. To make earth like, like heaven, you have to know heaven. So we need access to heaven, right? You can't do it any other way. And it's not somewhere up the stairs. It's not some dimension of space that I have to go to. It's right here at hand. I have to learn and I have to teach in worship and adoration to Yahweh how to shift dimensions from physical to spiritual. And I can do this at any given time. The realm of heaven is a dimension that is right in front of us. It is not somewhere out in the stars. It is here as a dimension of space. Through the presence of Yahweh and the kingdom within us, we can access that realm of heaven ourselves and bring that realm from heaven to earth. That's not a physical carrying it into the earth. It's principles, understanding, and revelation. And it's the breath. Now, this is my breath in the natural but as a spirit, when I breathe, I create. It's a different breath, because my breath brings life. Yahweh breathed into the nostrils of Adam, and he became a living being, a living soul. So my breath creates life. So wherever I breathe as a son, an oracle, a king, a priest, a legislator, I bring life. No matter who, no matter where, no matter what. How are you guys doing? Good. We've read this scripture many times. Creation is eagerly waiting. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's his calling at people. He's, he's almost begging us. See it. Understand it. Desire it. Run towards it. Allow it in your life. Open your heart for it. Open your heart towards Yahweh. Let him begin to shift you into it. Into this place. For the anxious longing of creation awaits eagerly for the re revealing of the sons of God. It's a presenting. That's right. Let me remind you, Jesus is getting baptized. And in his baptism, he's presented. This is my son, in whom I am well pleased. He's presented. But then he gets presented again later. Now he's walked with the seven spirits. And his engagement from out of the kingdom of heaven. Three years later, and he's on the Mount of Transfiguration, glowing in the dark. And the Father says, again, presenting him, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now hear ye him. Now he's completed his walk. And he's a mature Son that can breathe into creation and align and change. Because remind us of, before that he was doing what? Signs and wonders. Now he's becoming a sign and a wonder. Now he's glowing in the dark light. And he's walking and people are freaked out by him. He's waiting for Yahweh's people to be revealed in the fullness of their sonship. And, and it's so simple. You are a son, a daughter of the most high God. That's right. And you know what? Just because the Bible doesn't say daughters... Doesn't mean you're not a daughter. Well, sort of, sound of sort. I am a, I'm a son. You're a daughter. It's, it's not confusing. Okay, when I was the bride, that was confusing. Because I mean, I can do a lot of things, but being a woman, not possible. I can dress up all I want. The things I carry, it's not female. No, but spirits don't have a sex. Well, I'm a man. You're a woman. When I'm in the spirit, my name is Son of Fire, not Daughter of Fire. I've seen female angelic beings. Now, is my father male? Yeah. But again, out of him came male and female. So is my father male? No, my father is God. God's not man or female. 
She's gone. You guys okay? Yes. It will come into the freedom of Yahweh's glory as seen in his children. He's calling a people to understand the value of who we are and to walk in his fullness. We are righteous. And in our righteousness, we will establish justice. Now, don't, don't misunderstand that judge, justice and judgment goes together. You know, and so the scripture that tells us not to judge, we stopped. We stopped halfway through that scripture and just said, well, don't judge. But if you read the entire scripture, it says, well, don't judge um, according to the way you've been judged. Or judge according to the way you have been judged. So if you've ever been judged by, by the Father, you would want to judge everybody like that. If I've been judged by another man, it will bring me down. If I judge you in that measure, my judgment to you will be death. But if I understand the judgment the Father presents to me is to life, is to excel me, to propel me, is to grow me, to enhance me, to shift me to take me to the next level, then I begin to understand that I need to be judged. That's why the royal court is so important. That's why the courts of heaven are so important. That's why I sit before my Father is so important so that He can judge me, He can propel me, heal me. Take me to the next level. Speak life into me. And when I run a race and I come first, I stand on the podium. I've been judged. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Yes. Good. You know, I want to remind you of something. What enemy do you know that is still an enemy after he's been defeated and disarmed? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. That makes sense. I mean, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> but the enemy is not Satan he's my accuser he brings accusations now I say that we still talk of him as our enemy because that's what we understand and it's a remembrance in our theology but in reality the only enemy I have is death because I was never created to die and in my restoration through the blood of Yeshua I have to elevate into that position as a son, as a daughter. Grow, grow, grow. For something to be done on earth, it has to be done first in heaven. Then earth can be brought into line with what is in heaven. We have the authority to bind and loose things in the heavens so that they will be bound and loose here on the earth. But let me understand something. So I see something in the heavens, I bind it to me. I come into creation and I loose it to creation. Not, I see a demon. I see a demon somewhere. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Okay, and I loose you in the name of Jesus. The, the, the demon's going. Am I buying him? Am I Lord? What am I doing? <laughs> I have noticed that the demons are the most confusing creatures on the planet because of Christians. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good. You know, it's our growth, it's who we are. It's seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. It's not really something I truly have to look for. But at the end of the day, you have to remind yourself, a king searches out the mystery. Yeah. He engages the secret. Because the king is the governor and has governance, has the right to change rules and set rules. Right? A right to build and to break down, right. to uplift, to erect, to fatten, to unroot. We must give up doing things our own way and start doing them His way. Correct. Now remind yourself of the same that He wants His way to be your way. This doesn't mean that He wants to tell you exactly what to do every time you need to do something. This means He is wanting you to grow to such an extent that He has breathed all of His will and ways into you and it's set in your bones and you have become what He has breathed into you. That it's a way of life. A way of life. We need to get heavenly truth so that we can bring it to us. This is what we're doing. 
And I remember going into a chamber, and within this chamber there was excessive, extreme revelation, even finances, gold, just amazing. It was, it was packed. It was packed. Mostly a revelation. That was, that was the one thing I saw, was just revelation inside knowledge. Books, scrolls. And I was in there with an angelic being, and I said, why is it so packed? And they said, well, we keep sending these revelations down, but it keeps coming back. God's, God's people don't want it. Now, it's changed over the years. Because that same room is hardly have, hardly have anything in it. But I say that, it's a big room, it's got a lot of stuff in it. It's an infinite God that has got an infinite knowledge that's pouring infinity into a people that don't understand infinity. So the revelation, the knowledge, the understanding that He carries, that we're supposed to walk in, we haven't even touched the surface of it yet. We need to get heavenly truths so we can bring it to us. This means living from, um, for and from the kingdom first, above everything else and walking by faith. Natural authority releases natural influence. And without spiritual authority, we have no influence for the kingdom. When the kingdom is not only within us, but manifested through us and around us, so that people can see it, then it is clear that we carry spiritual authority. Yeah. And whoever is ruling in the spirit realm will also rule in the natural realm. Right. Tell how important it is for us to understand who we are, to take our place. Yes, yes. I remember many, many years ago, I say many, many, many years ago, but the other day, I'm confusing myself, <laughs> and probably about five, maybe six years ago, I was in a meeting with Grant and Samantha Mahoney in, um, in Albany, Louisiana, and one of the very prominent things I remember him saying is that Satan is losing grip. He doesn't have the authority and the power that he had five years ago. Why? Because we don't believe like we used to. We go, that's you! Oh, bind you, Satan! I come against this flu in the name of Jesus! We don't do that anymore. You go, that's you! Hmm. In the courts, accusation, thank you, Jesus. That's it. Not allowed to speak to him. He's losing grip because my press in the natural gives him a space to lose. <coughs> in the spirit, my breath gives him nothing except judgment. Judgment to death, nullification, destruction, divorce, restraining orders. He loses every time. But let me also remind you, he only loses when you're in the court. When you're not there, you're guilty. Immediately. So, and it's like that in any court. If I have to be in court today, and everyone else is there and I'm not there, I'm found guilty. You guys know that, right? Yeah. So the bondsman will come to me and arrest me because he didn't get his money back because I wasn't there. Wow. So if I'm not in the court, then all the petitions made against me oh. is granted. Wow. I mean, you can ask Joe. Yep. Right? All the stuff happening, it, it started in a courtroom. Yes. Then it carried on and carried on and carried on and carried on. Eventually he's lost everything and more. And then realizes, after everyone's coming against him, he realizes, it's a court case. So what do I do? I gather all my stuff and present it to the Father. That's what he did. Let's go read it. Once he presented it in the court of the Father, everything gets sorted out. Almost immediately. immediately. Um, double blessing. How are you guys doing? The mind to start that you are the salt of the earth. Now that doesn't mean that you burn a sore. <laughs> it means that you bring taste. You, you illuminate that which is already there. That's what salt does. Especially in today's life, especially in America. America, let me say it right. Because they don't put too much salt in the food because what if you have high blood pressure and you don't eat, eat, eat high salt food and now you eat their food and what are you going to do? Sue them. 
So they hardly put any food, salt in your food when you order it. So you have to put your own salt on. Yeah. And what happens when you put salt on food? It brings the taste out. Mm. So it reminds you, the taste out there. Heaven is out there. But it doesn't have no taste. No one can taste it. No one can see it. No one can touch it. No one can feel it. I mean, we've been preaching for years. You have to die to go there. You have to, to be a super spiritual leader that can lay hands on the sick and raise the dead and all the stuff. The gifts has to be prevalent in your life to have the anointing. Hmm. No, actually, no. That's not a truth. It's not a truth. I have to be in covenant and in relationship with him. And I say this again. When I was a child, I couldn't wait for my gifts on my birthday. It was all about the gifts. Uh, for years and years and years and years of my life, it was all about the gifts. I even got gifts on my older brother's birthday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every one of my other siblings, I was the youngest, there were two other siblings. When they birthday, I got, I got a present. My parents did it for everybody. I couldn't wait for one of them to get, to, to, to get, uh, to, to, you know, who had a birthday. Even when I had, when it was Christmas, that was it. It's all about those presents, right? But as I grew up, I just stopped caring about presents. So nice to receive a present, but I get to a place in my life where if I want something, I go buy it myself. Yeah. Because I've grown. It's not about the present anymore. It's about the growth. It's about the position I now have in what I carry. Because I say this, the gifts are for babies. Because when I grow up, it's not about the gifts because I grow into another realm of understanding, revelation, and responsibility. Now don't misunderstand me. Is the gifts important? It's extremely important. Because it is there for those who are unsaved to come into the kingdom of heaven. It is the sign and the wonder that they need. But we have to become signs and wonders as we grow up, yeah. as we shift, as we align. Hello. I grow from a priest to a king. It's a growth. That's what God is calling us to do. Grow, 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 grow. Yes. As an ambassador, we cannot be just the same as the world. No. Yeah. People should see the difference in our lives. Yeah. But let me, that's not the focus. My focus is not for them to see the change and the difference in my life. Because then it's all about do-do's and don'ts. My focus is the people. My focus is loving them, caring for them. Not trying to prove to them how good I am, how great I am, how beautiful I am, how holy I am, and how unholy they are. Yeah. Hmm. How you guys doing? Good. You're always asking a company of people to rise up. To rise up to a place where we stand within the dimensions of the kingdom, fully acknowledging everything that Yahweh has called us to. And standing in agreement with it all. Yeah. Once you stand in full agreement with everything Yahweh has called us to, it slowly but surely begins to fall into place. Mm. You know that before Constantine took over the church, the Ecclesia, um, they had all the money. They had the, their own banking system and everything came. They were very wealthy. But you read it. They came together and sold everything and divided it equally among each other. Now we have a handful of people in creation that's so rich that if they have to give everybody in creation a million dollars, they'll still be the richest people in the world. Right. But it's because Constantine took that system out and said, well, we put the pastor in charge who was never allowed to be in charge. Right. Mother, mother, <laughs> mommy, mama. Let me change your diaper. Oh, put your boot. There's your little pacifier. Shut it up. Stop crying. I'm going to smack your little bum. You're so naughty. Stop eating that poop. I don't know how you do your You're allowed to eat that. Stop playing there. Stop going there. You have to be sit right here. Listen to me. That's the only voice. Wow. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. But what's the father do? Get out of my house. <laughs> Go figure it out. Go figure it out, dude. You're 18. Bye bye. Now I say that I wouldn't do it to my kids, but one of my kids' friends, that's exactly what his parents did. The day he turned 18, they said, okay, take your bags, get up. Daddy. Why? Because that's the father's function. Train, equip, send. Train, equip, send. Train, equip, send. 
Not cuddle, oochie, toochie, poochie, boo. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, you're so wonderful. Fathers don't do that. No, they do. But that's not a focus. My focus is to train my kids, to teach my kids. That's what Yahweh wants for us. He wants us trained and equipped. He wants us to understand the value of the knowledge and revelation we're supposed to carry. How you guys doing? I want you to kind of just close your eyes. I don't want to go for too long tonight. First of all, because I'm tired. Father, I choose to accept my commission as an ambassador of heaven on earth. I choose to live on the earth according to the principles of heaven. I choose to receive my direction and protection from heaven. I choose to live from the resources of heaven. I choose not to be influenced by the, the ideas, cultures, and philosophy of the earth. I choose to become an agent, an agent of the counter culture of heaven. I choose to live a supernatural lifestyle with a higher level of authority. I choose to be an example of kingdom authorities and the character of Yeshua. I choose to demonstrate the good news of Yeshua in word and deed. I choose to be salt and light in my world. I am a minister of reconciliation to make disciples of the kingdom of God. Listen to me. To make disciples of God does not mean to lead someone to Jesus. That is not going to get someone discipled. Okay, once they get saved, they get discipled. So it isn't even my responsibility to get them saved. Because if you understand uh, what the angels do, they bring in the harvest. We are supposed to look at the harvest and disciple the harvest. But the harvest won't come in if creation is not aligned. If the sons is not putting their foot down and bringing creation into position. Yeah. I choose to be an example of kingdom authorities or attitudes and the character of Yeshua. I choose to demonstrate the good news of Yeshua in word and deed. I choose to be the salt and light in my world. I'm a minister of reconciliation to make disciples for the kingdom of God or Yahweh. I'm an ambassador of heaven to transform the earth. This is our place. When I agreed to my call from out of the kingdom of heaven into creation, it didn't tell me how many people I have to lead to Jesus. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. We'll tell you why. Because that's not my job. Now, is it good and is it a, probably a very good idea and is it something that can help? Yeah. I'm not forcing myself to talk about Jesus. I, mean, I can cough and it sounds like I'm saying Jesus. I go as far as to say I can fart. And it sounds like I, I'm saying the name of Jesus. It's all I know. It's all I do. It's, all, it's, it's Him. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, I, well, I can definitely burp His name. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Yahweh trying to get people to understand that it's time to go deeper. It's time to shift. It's time to take our place. Because as you step back into the realm again, you come and carry that authority and the power uh, to outwork it in your life and the lives of those around you. That's why I have to go to the heavens. I have to make that my abode, my house, my, my place where I live and move and have my being. Because if that's true to me, if that's locked and sealed in my understanding and revelation, then everything else I do will fall into line. I'll tell you guys, today and the last couple of days of working uh, these crazy hours, it's probably the most fleshly I've been in a very long time. Meaning that I didn't have any time to soak, I didn't have any time to, to prepare or meditate or do worship like I usually do in my house just chilling and just having a good time with Yahweh. But once I got to sit down, once I get that five minutes or two minutes where I go sit down, I, I eat, and all of a sudden all these visions, these images, this, like a movie just plays in front of me. What's happening in the city? What's happening in the nation? Because sons are beginning to activate their name of Yahweh in its full measure. We begin to understand the value of who we are, and we take earth, and we make it like heaven. Now, we're not there yet. It's a process we're growing into, but it's also my responsibility to grow into it as hard and as aggressive as I can. Yes. To take it by force. Mm -hmm. 
Father, we want to come before your throne right now, my King. We ask that you open up our hearts, that you'll pour into us, that you shift and align us to have this revelation in, in our hearts. Yes. To have this revelation and understanding in body, soul, spirit to its full measure. Yes. Father, I ask that you will teach your people. That revelation that we carry will come from your heart, from who you are. That it won't be something we heard from someone else. And even if we did hear it from someone else, we will take what we've heard and make it our own. We'll regurgitate it. Swallow it, regurgitate it, swallow it, regurgitate it, let it work its way through you until it's one with you, until it's part of you, until you believe it with every part of your being. Then we'll start seeing the results that Yahweh is calling us to. Father, we love you, we praise you, we love this city, we love this nation, we love creation. We love your people, we love all of who you are and all of what you've given to us. But let us have the right teaching, let's have the right understanding, let's go deep into all of what you have poured into us. To have this dimension that you've opened up and given to us work 100%. Father, we love you. We praise you, my King, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.